This video is gonna land me into a lot of trouble, isn't it? This series is made possible in part of my coffee account. Tips are greatly appreciated and help keep the show running. Welcome back to another steamy episode of Fake It Till You Make It Art School, a bi-weekly show about art through the perspective of a learning arts student. Today's topic is about NSFW art. <laughs> Damn it! NSFW stands for Not Safe for Work. It refers to material that would not be appropriate to show at school or work, such as nudity and pornography. Of course, NSFW is not just restricted to porn, it can also apply to material that has excessive violence and profanity. WHAT THE FUCK?! There's quite a lot of topics surrounding NSFW art, and I'll be restricting it to just simply two topics. And before we start, I do have a couple of disclaimers. Number one, since I am a citizen of the United States, I will be citing US law. Be sure to check your country on obscene laws and what they have to say about it. And number two, from here on out, when I say not safe for work, I am referring to the pornographic variety. With that out of the way, let's continue. There's an ever-present stigma against people who draw not safe for work art, and many professional artists outright discourage people into not making it. They say that doing not safe for work art will not land you a job and you won't go anywhere with it. And there is a lick of truth to that. Studios like Disney and DreamWorks will not accept not safe for work submissions on a portfolio and will not hire them. I would not blame them since a lot of studios have reputations to hold up and not safe for work art could very easily damage that reputation. If you are thinking about doing not safe for work art and taking commissions, I strongly recommend that you go under a pen name. Why? Because if you're applying for a job at a studio, they're going to be looking at your name and your portfolio. And if they look up your name and porn is the first thing that pops up, that is going to be a red flag right there. However, to say that you can't make money off and of not safe for work art is just false. Have you guys seen the furry fandom? That place is a breeding ground <laughs> to make money off not safe for work art. The second and last topic that will be discussed is whether or not not safe for work art should be labeled as art. I know in the very first episode, I talked about how art is subjective, and that sentiment does ring true. However, things get rather murky when the law gets involved. In the United States, we have this thing called the Miller Test. The Miller Test is a three-part obscenity test that the Supreme Court uses to determine whether speech or expression could be labeled as obscene. Obscene, in legal terms, refers to graphic depictions of people engaging in sexual acts, and even escritory acts. How lovely. It was initially created to help protect children and animals from being exposed to pornographic material. Number one, whether the average applying contemporary community standards would find the work taken as a whole appeals to the prurient interest. That's legal talk for? Does this sexually arouse people? Number two, whether the work depicts or describes in a patently offensive way sexual conduct specifically defined by the applicable state law. And number three, whether the work taken as a whole lacks serious artistic, political, and scientific value. Keep in mind that any speech or expression can only be classified as obscene if and only if it meets all three requirements of the test. Unfortunately, the advent of internet has made the Miller test more or less obsolete. It's tricky to implement a community standard to what is the Wild West without the fear of possibly suppressing forms of protected speech. So, should not safe for work art be classified as art? It really depends on what the art is. As I mentioned before, art is subjective, but things get tricky when the law gets involved. I personally believe that, as a rule of thumb, if the not safe for work art in question is not depicting something as horrible like pedophilia or bestiality, then it should be allowed. The Miller test can't operate on modern times because of the internet being so global and commonly used to spread not safe for work content. 
especially when different groups of people have different sensibilities to things like gore and sex. I myself am a gore hound, but I know plenty of people who can't stomach it. Some people like sex and others don't. For now, not safe for work art will continue to flourish and the Miller test will continue to be obsolete until it's able to be modernized. And that's it for not safe for work art. Did you learn a thing or two about the Miller test? In fact, was this your first time hearing about it? Let me know in the comments below and until then, I'll see you guys next time.